Hey, 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 Team HQ Sports! You've officially made it through the tough part of the week and have arrived straight to the madness. I'm Lauren Gambino, and if you're still at work, then take this message straight to your boss. You have my full permission to take an early day and watch round one of the tournament. What? It's just as effective as a doctor's note. I swear it is. Try it. Thank you for joining me for our own special college basketball edition of HQ Sports. Yes, we are all in this together. I bet you have your brackets all figured out. Your numbers have been set for any of the pools you might be in. So now we watch the action. And if you're just like me, then you're banking on some upsets. I love a good Cinderella story. VCU, Butler, and who could forget sweet little sister Jean and the Loyola Chicago Ramblers. Oh, what a sweet, touching story, right? That was fun to watch. So we asked on Twitter, at HQ Sports, you know, our little warm up before every game, what upsets are you calling for today and tomorrow's round one games? And if you didn't get a chance to head on Twitter, drop your answer in the chat right now. Chelsea, Mark Cooper, and Papa Bravo say Yale. Nick Allard, t rail Chris, Tony Sellers, and Gordon James say Murray State. And Matt Tucker says Old Dominion over Purdue. I'm mostly with you, team. I got Yale winning two games and St. Mary's beating Nova and Murray State winning one, too. You gotta go for it sometimes. You know what they say, scared money don't make money. I don't know who says that. I think I just said it right now. But speaking of money, let's get you closer to some cash right now. We're going 12 rounds of college basketball trivia. Get them all right, and you win. Tonight's prize is that $1,000. And we got another one for you. How about 10 million points? Oh yes, points are back as of last night. Uh-huh, season three of HQ is in full effect and we're giving out more points for every question so you could level up and earn free passes even faster. And just for kicks, we're doubling the points at no extra charge to you on this special day game. If you want even more than that, you can pick up a points multiplier right now. And if you want extra lives, it's easier than ever. The HQ referral slate has officially been wiped clean. Love a clean slate. You can reinvite all your friends to play HQ season three. And when you do that, you'll both get an extra life. You can also pick one up now for this game that's starting in just, oh, just a few seconds. And keep playing HQ to earn free lives on all of those streaks. You know, five days in a row, all that jazz. Yeah, you got it. All right, team, it's the moment to the over 127,000 players ready to get in on the madness. We're tipping off. Round one starts right now. What term is commonly given to players who leave for the NBA after their freshman year? One and done, bingo bango, or Irish goodbyes? Love a good Irish goodbye. <laughs> or Irish exit, right? Well, ever since the NBA messed with the rules in a post-LeBron era, we have been blessed or cursed, depending how you look at it, with the one and done, where the best players like these guys, take a look at them, stop over on campus for just a season before heading to the association. It's called the old one and done here at round number one, 96,432 of you getting that one right. And you know what that means? You're not one and done here because you're going for two. Round two, here it is, coming at ya. Oh yeah, what is the only school to win the men's and women's NCAA basketball tournaments in the same year? UConn, Duke, or UCLA? Hey, do you think a school can do it this year? Let me know your pick in the chat right now. Only one team has done it, and they've done it twice. In 2004 and in 2014, it's UConn. There they are, they took both titles home. What a feat. UConn is the answer here at round number two. Oh yeah. 2004 and 2014. Amazing. 75,607 of you getting that one right. All right. The game is rolling now. Round number three coming at you. 
Oh yeah, just keep dribbling that ball. The shot is ready for the taking. Here it is. Which of these is not one of the regions in the men's NCAA tournament? North, East, or South? I hope you saw this and remembered it from your brackets, right? Hmm. Well, the four regions are as follows. And I'm gonna give you some directions while I'm at it. It is the East, then it is the South. Then it is the West, and then like kind of here is like the Midwest. It's not all the way out, but it's like the Midwest. The North, <laughs> nope, North is the only cardinal direction that is not blessed with a 16-team group. North, I got it right in the end. The North remembers 66,064 of you getting that one right. All right, you don't need your compass for the next one, I promise. Round number four. The National Invitation <laughs> Tournament is played entirely at the home of what NBA team? Knicks, Lakers, or Bulls? Where is it played? The NIT, sometimes nicknamed the not invited tournament, ha, huh, because it's for teams that don't make the big dance, is played at MSG, Madison Square Garden, home of the New York Knicks. That's right, Knicks is the answer here. At round number four, 57,857 of you getting that one right. And hey, listen to the over 57,000 of you. I need you to pay attention and focus right here for this next one. Who is this coach running around looking for a hug after one of the tournament's greatest upsets? They won it! On the dunk! Who was that coach? Was it Bobby Knight, Mike Krzyzewski, or Jim Valvano? What a moment, right? I love reliving these bits of history with you, team. Well, the NC State Wolfpack of 1983 had an all-time buzzer beater when Derek Wittenberg airballed his shot to the perfect place. Lorenzo Charles's hands, who then dunked it to beat Houston for the title and leave Coach Valvano frantically looking for a hug. That was Coach Jimmy V for the win there. 59,398 of you getting that one right as we make our way to our halfway point. I hope you have those extra lives handy. Here it is, round number six. What women's team was the first in either March Madness tournament to beat a number one seed as a number 16. Was it Harvard, Minnesota, or UMBC? Well, the women of Harvard made history in 1998 as the first number 16 to take down a number one when they upset Stanford. No team did it in the men's tournament until Maryland Baltimore County upset Virginia last year. Harvard! Yes, Harvard, 16,844 of you getting this one right. Wow, it's a TKO here at our halfway point. Round number six to over 37,000 of you. Oh, try again next time, but over 16,000 of you are moving on. And since it's halftime, why don't we do a quick score update thanks to our wonderful producer, Laura. Minnesota is up 38 to 33 against Louisville. And the big upset, Yale, is down 21 to 27 against LSU. A lot of us have Yale winning. Let's see how that one plays out. Round number seven. Which player had the highest career scoring average in NCAA history? Larry Bird, Pete Maravich, or Michael Jordan? You know, Pistol Pete had good years in the NBA too, but his real legend was made in college when he put up 44.2 points per game over three years at LSU. And that was all without the three-point line. Mmm, I love it. Pistol Pete Maravich is the answer here at round number seven. 21,417 of you getting that one right. The questions are only getting tougher. Can you hang with me to the end? Round number eight coming at ya. Oh, yes. Besides UConn, what was the last team to win back-to-back -back women's NCAA basketball titles? Baylor, Tennessee, or Notre Dame? I'm looking for you to go back-to-back -back here and stay in this thing. 
The Fighting Irish are defending champs, and Baylor is the current unanimous number one. But the last non-UConn team to win back-to-back -back titles was the Tennessee Lady Vols in 07 and 08. Making today's answer here at round eight. Tennessee, of course, 13,342 of you getting that one right. All right. Game on, 13,000 left in this thing. Let's go, round nine. Which team nickname did not receive a number one overall seed in the men's or women's tournament this year? Bulldogs, Wildcats, or Cavaliers? We're looking for number one. All right, well, the Gonzaga Bulldogs are a one seed. And then the Virginia Cavaliers are also a one seed. The Kentucky and Kansas State Wildcats are a two and a four, respectively. Wildcats did not receive a number one. That's the answer. 8,737 of you getting this one right as we enter the final quarter here. Round number 10. Can you hang with me to the finish? Let's do it. What university's team had the fake fraternity nickname of Phi Slamma Jamma? Georgia, Georgia, Houston, or Kentucky? You know I love a good nickname. Drop one in the chat right now. Well, powered by future NBA Hall of Famers Clyde Drexler and Hakeem Olajuwon in the 80s, Houston and Phi Slamma Jamma never quite won at all, but they did wreck a whole lot of rims in the process. Houston is the answer here. Oh yeah, 9,160 of you getting that one. Team, there are two rounds left. This is where you need to bring it home. Come on, round number 11, coming at you. Which of these players led the NCAA in points per game during a college season? Steph Curry, Will Chamberlain, or Michael Jordan? Arguably the two greatest scorers of all time, Wilt and MJ never dominated at their NBA levels while at Kansas and US UNC. But the skinny legend Steph did lead everyone while at Davidson in 08 and 09. Steph Curry is the answer here at round 11. 4,541 of you getting that one right and securing your spot in the final round. We say goodbye to over 4,000 of you here that couldn't pull it out for the finish as we head in to the final round. It all comes down to this. Everything you've worked and trained for all season long. You made it past Selection Sunday. You're in the tournament. Can you get your win here in round number one? And just take home that prize and glory from me? Let's see, round 12. By seed, what team was the biggest underdog to win the men's NCAA tournament? Villanova, Arizona, or Kansas? What's it gonna be? It all comes down to this. Well, Villanova has won two of the last three tournaments, but they weren't always so consistent like their first run to the title as an eight seed in 1985, the first year of the 64-team tournament when they beat Patrick Ewan's Georgetown Hoyas in the final. Villanova is the answer here. 4,359 of you picked the right team today, and you're our new HQ Sports MVPs. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh yes, we have 4,359 winners. Great work, everyone. It looks like we are all taking home a prize of about 23 cents and 2,295 points. Ayo, Halloween. Oh, I see you there, kitty cat. I and saws. Family man, it looks like. All right, 23 cents is coming your way. JF Sumner. Oh, I like it. Another family photo. These are so charming. 23 cents is going your way. Jet Blanket. That is a scary panda. I'm sorry to say it. It is a scary panda. 23 cents is coming your way. Zanny 3, another 23 cents is coming your way as well. Amazing work today, everyone. Congrats to all of our new HQ Sports MVPs. You earned it. Now take the rest of the week off to celebrate. 
or just watch approximately 7,000 basketball games in the next 96 hours. Either or, it's up to you. We've got trivia up at 3 p.m. with our girl Shaza, and we will be back to our regular schedule, which is every Monday and every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So we'll see you next week for some more HQ Sports. Now, I got games to watch and a bracket to obsess over. Until next time, I'm Lauren Gambino. Remember to hydrate, focus, and keep your head in the game.